the first speaker, Dr. Mahapatra. Dr. P. C. Manoria. Yeah, Dr. P. C. Manoria. Yeah, and uh, Dr. P. C. Manoria. Yeah, sir, Dr. P. C. Manoria, you can. For the next twelve minutes, I'll be talking on this interesting topic: war against heart failure, the new weapons in the armory. All of us know, heart failure one sets in runs a malignant progression. The conventional therapy for heart failure no doubt blunts this malignant progression, but despite the guideline-based triple foundation therapy, there is substantial reducible modality that is about 50% at the end of five years. Therefore, there is always an ongoing search to have newer and newer weapons in the armory to fight the devil of stroke. But curiously enough, all new weapons in the armory for heart failure only targets have REF and have PEF. As you had already heard, it is still in search of a therapy which could improve its outcome. Now, all of us know neurohormonal activation plays a key role in initiation and perpetuation of heart failure. And we have strong blockers to all the three maladaptive neurohormonal system, the beta blockers for the systemic, uh, sympathetic system, the ACEI, ARB for the renin angiotensin, and the MRAs for the aldosterone. And these three uh, blockers, they constitute the triple baseline foundation therapy for HEPREF, and each agent has a class one indication. Now, all of us know MRAs was approved way back in 2003, and it took 11 years for the trial is to target the second pathway of heart failure, which is the natriuretic peptide pathway, and which is a favorable pathway. And this was targeted by Secubitral Valsartan, and the Paradigm trial was presented in 2014. 2019, we had another revolution with uh, another new weapon, the SGLT2 inhibitors, and DAPA-HF for the first time showed improved CV outcomes in patients with HEPREF, and this was followed by Emperor reduced in 2020. SGLT2 receptors are the molecule of the decade. Then we are having another weapon which is being evaluated, that is uh, the Verisigret, which was tried in the Victoria trial, and this year we had this positive trial. And we have Omicaptin Mecarbil, which again, the top line results from the Galactic HF recently has shown positive results. Whenever we are treating heart failure, it is very, very important that every hospitalization, every re-hospitalization takes the patient closer to death. And therefore, one of the important messages in heart failure is prevent hospitalization for heart failure, prevent rehospitalization for heart failure. And indeed, all the new weapons which are going to talk are powered to do it on top of guideline-based triple foundation therapy. Now, when we look at the evolution of therapies for heart failure, we have the perisecubitral era, as you can see. Uh, RAS blockers and beta blockers were approved in 90s. 2003, MRAs were approved and 2014 kicked off a new era of uh, secubital valsartan with arni and we had the paradigm trial in 2014 and this agent secubital valsartan was approved for chronic heparap in 2016 and we have the pine hf trial in 2019 and this agent was approved for adhf in 2019 so we had an additional pillar for heart failure heparap with the addition of arni 2019 initiated dawn of a new era when we have the first SGLT2 trial, DAPA HF, which showed positive CV outcome. And DAPA was approved for HEPREF. And this year we had the Emperor trial. And all these SGLT2 networks were already approved in past for decreasing hospitalization for heart failure, but not for treatment of HEPREF. So DAPA HF laid the first foundation stone for utility of SGLT2 inhibitors for treatment of HEPREF. And in fact, with this, we had the fifth pillar of uh, heart failure. And DAPA, for the first time, smashed the boundary between diabetic and non-diabetic drug. Being an anti-diabetic medication, it shows similar benefit in diabetic patients. And it has opened a new pathway 
for heart failure uh, management. Secubitril valsartan, as we know, thrown a new concept of multi-system neurohormonal modulation never heard before. The second unique feature of secubitril valsartan is that it achieved a class one recommendation to replace a class one AAC and ARBs. It rarely happens in the history of pharmacotherapy that a new drug is given a class one recommendation to replace a class one A drug. Usually it is given as an end on therapy and all of you are aware of that it shows a very statistically significant reduction in half rev on top of the conventional therapy, a 20% reduction. And both the individual endpoints also show the statistically significant reduction. You can see cardiovascular death is decreased by 20% on top of standard therapy. The mortality benefit with secubitril valsartan are pan mortality benefits, whether it is all cause, whether it's cardiovascular, whether it's sudden death or worsening heart failure, all mortalities are reduced on top of guideline based recommended therapy. And the benefits in heart failure hospitalization are 21% reduction. And as you can see, cause mortality also a 16% reduction. It results in lower likelihood of multiple hospitalization. And as you know, every hospitalization is very dangerous. Fewer days in intensive care with Arnie, as you can see the data. And we have SGLT2 inhibitors, another new weapon in the armory. And these are the three front runners, AMPA, Kana, and the Dapaglofazin. All these agents after 2015 have been approved for decreasing hospitalization for heart failure after these landmark trials, the Amparad, the Canvas, and the Declare. And DAPA laid the foundation stone by DAPA HF trial for treatment of HEFREF. And this is the design of the study, DAPA 10 compared with standard of care. And you can see the positive results. Primary endpoint, cardiovascular death hospitalization for HF or RHF decreased by 26%. Look at the NMT, 21. And the individual endpoint, CV death, 18% reduction, and worsening HF event, 30% reduction, and also all-cause mortality. There were three very key messages from DAPA. The first big message from DAPA was that the drug is effective in known diabetic HF also, and there's no issue of hypoglycemia. Data has shown you can very safely give it a non diabetic the second big message was that DAPA HF shows incremental benefit on top of ARNI, and that is also very exciting. The third big message is with DAPA coming in vogue for health, it is poised to change the definition of refractory heart failure. Prior to DAPA HF, whenever we diagnose refractory heart failure, submit a patient for a device like Elbert or cardiac transplant, we always say, Have you taken ARNI or not? If not, go and take ARNI and come back. Now we'll say, have you taken ARNI? And now we'll say you have to take DAPA also. If not, go back and take DAPA and then come. So it's poised to delay uh, device therapies like LVAD and transplantation. And you can see the earlier you start DAPA in class two, more is the benefit. Then we had the Emperor trial, which showed equivalent results in patients uh, for decreasing hospitalization for heart failure. But there was no significant difference in the cardiovascular death or the whole cause mortality compared to DAPA where it scored over uh, the emperor is used. The mechanism of action of SGLT2 are multifarious as you can see on the slide. More important than that is that it acts and definitely acts and improves the outcome of patients of heart failure. One of the interesting mechanisms is that it decreases interstitial edema and this is one of the reasons why it is speculated that trials of DAPA in the deliver trial and trials of emperor and the emperor preserved it may become out positive because if the interstitial edema is decreased, the hypertrophic fibers or the fibrotic fibers in HEFREF will be able to relax better. And this is one of the reasons why people are speculating that trials with HEFREF will come out to be positive. So SGLT2 DAPA has done the formidable task of improving CV outcomes in HEFREF on top of the other pillars of weapon and therefore it is a very exciting new weapon in the army to fight the devil of stroke and as you can see SGLT2 inhibitors particularly DAPA which is proven can be used across the continuum of heart failure you can use in stage A heart failure prevent you can use in stage B C and even stage D. One of the important new messages forming from heart failure treatment is 
never treat heart failure in isolation, never treat kidney failure in isolation because there is a close cardiorenal continuum. Heart failure and CKD are intimately linked and there's bidirectional interplay between them, which means if heart failure worsens, kidney failure worsens and vice versa. So always whether you are treating uh, heart failure or CKD, treat cardiorenal continuum as a whole for comprehensive treatment and it is now believed, rather it is true, that if you treat CKD, it targets benefit in, it triggers benefit for heart failure. And that was perhaps the missing link, which now we have realized. The other reason is that when we are treating patients with hep, please focus on CKD, focus on CKD. And because they slow down the trajectory of chronic kidney disease, I'll show you in a minute, the normal decline in EGFR is 0.9 ml per minute per year. When patients develop diabetic CKD, the GFR falls roughly 10 ml per year. And prior to the RAS era in the early 20th century, uh, the, many of these patients were submitted to dialysis and transplant. But the first revolutionary era for CKD came with RAS blockers in the early part of the first decade of the 20th century. And they decreased the slowing GFR from 10 to 4.59 ml per year. And the second revolution actually was kicked off in 2015, but documented after the Kidding trial in 2019. And this produced an additional improvement in the declining GFR from 4.9 to 1.85. And you'll be very glad to know we are now amidst the third upcoming revolution in CKD. The Fidelio trial with non steroidal MRAs is positive, and this has the interesting feature of this is unlike the first two strategy, which targets kidney by hemodynamic changes, this targets fibration and inflammation. So in future, the prognosis of CKD is going to improve tremendously. The normal decline being 0.9 after dual therapy is 1.85. If you use top of the uh, uh, phenarinone, it will make phenomenal difference. And look at this unbelievable but true CKD trial. This, uh, Canaglofosin trial, credence slowed down the declining EGFR and you postponed dialysis by 15 years, which is indeed a very, very great achievement. And therefore, my message for heart failure treatment, we as cardiologists, when we are treating, please remember seven reasons why all cardiologists must also focus on kidney because CKD is easy to detect, proteinia and GPR is simple tools to detect, Trajectory of CKD can be slowed down tremendously. SGL1 has greater efficacy on top of RAS blockers and CKD detection and treatment saves the heart. If you want to save the heart further, also target CKD and target kidney. Targeting kidney triggers benefits in heart failure. And this was the missing link which we have missed for several years. So what is the current status of SGL T2 inhibitors? We have uh, canaglobosin, which showed uh, decreased hospitalization in the CANVAS trial. We have the Kidding trial, which laid the first foundation stone of SGLT2 Dibrakana for patients of diabetic CKD. Then we have the AMPA, which showed decrease in cardiovascular death for the first time, a documented cardiovascular death reduction. And the AMPA trial, which showed decreased hospitalization for heart failure, but failed to show reduction in cardiovascular death and all cause mortality. And we have the DECLIA trial, which has data in primary and secondary prevention, which has data in HEPREF diabetic and non diabetic, and the DAPA CKD, which has data in diabetic and non diabetic CKD. So DAPA is little ahead of the other agents, although we do not have head to head trials. But instead of comparing the trials with different SGL2, more important is the message that these agents are life saving, they are very, very safe, they are practice changing molecules. They are guidelining changing molecules and cost saving, and we must disseminate the benefits of SGL tutor widely. The medical fraternity is not sufficient to disseminate. You should also utilize various social media and change the outcome of the patient. And we not uncommonly hear that after use of SGL T2, the patient say, you have really changed my life. And this is again very interesting. The overall survival projection in a 55 years old male if you use all the four agents, which means beta blockers, uh, RNA, MRAs, and SGLT2, you can increase the projected uh, lifespan by 6.3 years, even at the age of 55 years. And this is indeed very enlightening. The other new weapon in the army is Verisigret. 
And as you can see, this is an oral soluble guanylate cyclase stimulator that directly enhances the cyclic AMP pathway. This pathway gets blunted due to endothelial dysfunction and decreased nitrous oxide. But to the right, you can see if you directly stimulate this, there's more CDMP production, which protects the heart and the vasculature. And this was the trial which carried out in uh, Clonif uh, half pet with worsening. And you can see the positive results, a 10% reduction on top of all therapies, statistically segment. Look at the NMT, 24. Cardiovascular death was not improved, all cause death was not improved. And this is the summary of the trial. And the important messages from the Victoria trial, NNT24 is one daily medication, easy to digest, safe, well tolerated, without the nuisance of monitoring renal functions or electrolytes. And in future, this will be approved. And lastly, we had the Omicaptive Macarville, which is a novel selective cardiomyosin activator. And the benefits of this agent is it acts in a peculiar way, increases duration of systole, increases stroke volume without any increase in the myocyte calcium, DPDD, or myocardial oxygen consumption. So it doesn't have the danger of inducing cardiac arrhythmias. The collective HF trial was ongoing, and we had the top line results on the 8th October. The trial met the primary endpoint and is positive. The secondary endpoint were, of course, not met in terms of cardiovascular death. So what is the take-home message? Heart failure one sets and runs a malignant progression. The two new weapons in the army to target the developed stroke are sacubitral valsartan and DAPA. AMPA is not yet approved, but will be approved, and they produce great benefits. So what is the big message? Utilize all four drugs, beta blockers, AC, oblique ARB, oblique RNA, MRA, SGL22 for hep rep, as they provide incremental benefit. Never hesitate to use all the four drugs, although the sequence of initiation may vary. So if possible, all these four drugs should be on board, though the sequence of initiation may vary, and all therapies should be escalated, heart failure and diabetic, 85% death at five years should be escalated. One should not think of de-escalating even if the patient is stable. Polypharmacy is the rule like malignancy, AMI and other diseases, and patient should be motivated to accept it even if he's not having much symptoms. And very, very important, the newer development, target cardio renal continuum and not treat half prep alone. In fact, targeting CKD triggers benefit for heart death and the other new weapons, which are still in the process of evolution, not yet approved, have shown exciting data in the trial that is a very cigarette and omicaptive McCarville. Thank you very much for your kind attention.